My name is Jamie Piles. I joined Samaritan in December of 1996. We were homeschooling our kids and we were already thinking outside the world's box, if you will. And I saw a little tiny classified ad about this new kind of idea I'd never heard of before. My first reaction was, that's the kind of thing that we would do, isn't it? And so I finally called the number, talked to them, and the more I asked them questions, the more I liked their answers. We are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer, but there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down. I'm happy with that, but I would not be happy if, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. So I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter. Certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. <laughs> that is Richard Dawkins, atheist, renowned atheist Richard Dawkins. That's not Russell Moore. <laughs> that was not David French. I, are you? Um, that was Richard Dawkins. Uh, <laughs> do you know when this came out? Last week. Last week. You Last know week. when it came out though? Like what day it actually came out on? No. A uh, April, April, April 1st. 1st. Uh. <laughs> so I'm just wondering here. <laughs> Is this, we but it's a whole pumped? interview, and, and he was pretty serious the whole interview. So, yeah. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Cross Baltic on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Good to be with you guys. We have, and it should Tell be up on our website. Tell people the truth. You can't handle the That's truth. That's what I'm about to do mm -hmm. right now. Our early registra registration deadline for our conference is uh, April 15th. And then there's going to be another early registration deadline because you guys are so bad <laughs> at, like, signing up. Why are you up. telling me? We you get, like, a thousand signups in, like, July and August. You just told me I'm to wait trying, till the second one. I'm, I'm trying to get them. Well, it's actually cheaper right now. It's the but cheapest it's gonna go price. Up. It's the cheapest spot. So it's going to go up a little bit, mm. and then a little up. You know, just i got to know how many people are coming to this conference because we got food and, you Beings know, and beer and all stuff. Yeah. So, anyways, that's, a, that's there. And then, secondly... Go, go to prodigalamerica.com. Prodigalamerica.com. Register. The other thing that's going on is we're actually doing a... Uh, uh, a competition, oh. um, a contest for people, uh, and that should be on our website. It already the link I think's already gone out, but it should be on our homepage on prodigalamerica.com uh, now as I'm talking. Uh, and you can go and sign up. And basically, if you can produce like a cinema style quality commercial, and you win commercial for what for the Prodigal America, mm. and you win, oh, we'll for the fly conference. you and a friend out and like pay for hotel and everything. Whoever wins, define cinema tickets. It's got it's all defined there. Oh, when you fill out the form. We define it all out. So. I, I thought you defined it. Well, no, I, not I, anymore. I, I told him to make sure you defined oh, it. Oh no, <laughs> no Knox never did it, so I, I took with it. And me and Neil went, oh, went and did it. No. So. Oh there no, oh no, oh boy. So people like like a trailer. It's like yeah, a yeah, like kind of like a commercial. We have examples of commercials that were kind of. Okay. How long at. does it have to be? Uh, you know, about two to three minutes is kind of what we're aiming for. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So All it right. should be fun. But the winner, there's first, second, and third place. The the, the first place will fly you out to the conference. Right. You'll get to participate in our but VIP has to be, dinner. Has to be good though. So it has to be good. Yeah. If no one wins, no one wins. <laughs> so we also will reject all. Uh, I say that, and I said if no one's good enough, then we're gonna, you know, yeah, we, yeah. we reserve the right to say no to everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the fine print. Yeah. The mission of Armored Republic is to honor Christ by equipping free men with tools of liberty necessary to preserve God-given rights in the Armored Republic. There's no king but Christ. We are free craftsmen. Body armor is a tool of liberty. We create tools of liberty. Free men must remain ever vigilant against tyranny wherever it appears. God has given us the tools of liberty needed to defend the rights he's bestowed upon us. And Armored Republic is honored to offer you those tools. So visit them today at ar500armor.com. That's the letters AR, the numbers, 500, 500, the word armor.com. I mean, I'm kind of torn about Dawkins because, like, this is what he was saying about 10 years ago. What's yeah, up? this is not new. No, 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 this. Oh. Seriously saying that wine turns into blood. Mock them. Ridicule them. In public. Religion makes specific claims about the universe which need to be substantiated and need to be challenged and, if necessary, need to be ridiculed with contempt. <laughs> well, first, I mean, the first part, I'm, I'm wondering if he's just kind of a hardcore Protestant. 
You, you know, I mean, I mean, like you know, John Calvin and Martin Luther. I mean, maybe not Martin Luther. He's he's a little he's a, he's a little confused. Did you just call Richard Dawkins yeah. a hardcore Protestant? Well, I mean, that I mean, he's making fun of the Roman Catholic doctrine of of transubstantiation. Wine, wine and blood. Wine doesn't turn into blood. Yeah. Uh huh. And the Protestants did mock. But that. water does turn into wine. It can. Yeah. But, but not like every week. No. Well, Jesus did though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. You know. Also, Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. And also the Red Sea parted. Right. Uh, but but you know the, Okay, the, I see what you're doing you here. Know, I mean the doctrine that, uh, that you know that the of transubstantiation. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. I mean that 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 isn't biblical right. and it is foolish. Right. But that's not what we want to talk about. That's not really what he was talking about. He was, he was mocking the whole Christian faith. Yeah. And then now he calls himself a cultural comes Christian. Comes out on April yeah. Fool's First, Day. Yeah. And says um, he wants so he wants apples mm. and no apple trees. Yeah. Right. Well, I was thinking about yeah. He, he, if you you have to have the root. And yeah. That's connected to the fruit. Yeah, you can't I mean, have yeah, the fruit. He, you know, he the wants root. cathedrals. That's right. Uh, he wants hymns. He wants Christmas carols. Mm-hmm. He wants a Christian culture. Well, yeah, he feels comfortable in it without the root, with with uh, right. with, without the the seed, which without the mm-hmm. heart that mm-hmm. produces those things. I mean, why why? Do, I mean, cathedrals are, are glorious, glorious um, um, incarnations of yeah. a worldview. Of, That's right. Of faith. That's right. That's right. I mean, why why were people willing over generations? I mean, you, maybe you guys have seen these you know documentaries on the building three hundred years, four hundred years, generations yeah. of people who poured their lives out. Um, because uh, they wanted to honor their creator. They wanted to honor their redeemer. Yeah. They wanted to honor Christ. Right. And and so worship was at the center. These cathedrals were built frequently at the center, and, and they were willing to, to give their lives uh, to that. Um, but you, you don't get that kind of cultural fruit if right. you don't have a genuine uh, believing mm-hmm. root. Right. You ever seen a kid at a school who um, hates his teacher, like absolutely hates his teacher, and they're like, oh, I hate him so much. And then the substitute teacher comes in mm. and they hate that teacher far more than mm. they hate their teacher. And they know that they have, they have to live underneath the rule of that teacher is going to be far worse. Mm. And so that they fight their very best to make sure the teacher that they hated, hated the first time, yeah, 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 that they de- defend them, protect them, keep them in the, the rule that they have there. I actually sympathize and feel bad for Richard Dawkins oh, yeah. because he's actually oh, worked yeah. really hard to undermine Christianity in America yeah. to change. You know, he's at a conflict place right now because he's looking at the other side of this and he's like, the people that are coming in are going to have my head because yeah, right. you got to remember, Oh, this is got to go back here. The first group to experience the wokeism of our culture was not Christianity almost. It really was the atheist. That's where it was really a tried and plied at. James Lindsay talks about this. Where? Hmm. Where, 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 So the atheist movement, um, woke culture infiltrated their systems, their environment, their culture, because if you don't have a standard or anything, it's easier to seek right right in, right? Right. And so um, Richard Dawkins had made a comment or something, uh, I think it was about a woman, and it didn't play so well, and they basically canceled Richard Dawkins. They came after him. They came after that. him and yeah. shut Richard Dawkins yeah. down. He couldn't speak, couldn't be platform anywhere. Um, kind of something happened like that with Sam Harris, and all of a sudden, there's this whole James Lindsay talks about this. Everything. This is why James Lindsay is what he is right now. Everything that James Lindsay loved about the atheist movement was destroyed so by. He, so he saw it eating itself already. It, it, came, it, it was it was the first victim. Yes. Atheism, the atheist movement was the first victim of DEI, was the first victim of yeah. the woke culture. Yeah. And so th- these guys, everything that they were working to do, they accomplished it in one sense. And the first place that their idol took took hold was in their own world. Ate them. And it ate mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Right. Idols always break the hearts of their worshipers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so there it is right there. It broke their heart. And they realized that they didn't have a world to live in inside of atheism. So then what, what Richard Dawkins does, he hides for a little bit because he doesn't have anywhere to speak. He's not selling yeah, any books. Interesting. James Lindsay, um, the whole, um, oh, I remember the, the Shield Squad. I can't remember. Everybody's like, I deny my baptism. They did that whole thing back in the day. So James Lindsay sees this and he's like, wait a second. This movement is not just destroying atheism. It's trying to topple the whole structure of the world and replace itself as the God of the mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. And so he tries to, he's started by trying to warn everybody, do not go woke. And, and right. when I did the documentary with founders, one of the first things that I picked up from him that he says in the opening of the documentary, he's like, if I want to destroy, like, 
if I really want to destroy evangelicalism, the first thing I would do is make everybody go woke. Uh, right. And he says in that interview he does with Michael Fallon, that's what destroyed us. Right. And so don't take the bait. And now Richard Dawkins is saying, if we're going to get back to the good old days yeah. where I can debate Christians and yeah. talk about how horrible they are and mock Roman Catholics and mock Roman Catholics and hopefully destroy evangelicalism. Well, it, <laughs> there's really weird because even Christopher Hitchens didn't want to destroy it. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just I, thinking about I that. I remember that. I remember that. But. That. At the very end of the movie, right? Yes. We're, collision we're, with Doug. Collision with Doug. Where he's, uh, yeah, the movie Collision is a documentary of Pastor Doug Wilson and uh, and and uh, and Christopher Hitchens. Yes. In the backseat of this limo or car or something. And he says, you know, if if I could make it so that there was not one single believing Christian left in the world, I wouldn't do it. Right. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, I, don't, and I don't know why exactly. He's like, he's like I, I don't know why, but I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. That because, well, yeah, I, I would love to know why, yeah. but I think with Dawkins is that he sees there is no world for him to exist right. outside of a Christian world. Yeah. Do what? Make what? Yeah. Build what? Right. What hymns? Mm-hmm. What, why does he like, think about that. Yeah. He likes hymns. Yeah. And Christmas carols. There's yeah. singing about Jesus. Yeah. And he likes them. Well, secularism is dead. It, it has, it's, it's all dead and falling apart and there's nothing coherent in it anymore. So like old classical kind of liberalism, there's, there's a little coherence because they had a, a similar moralistic worldview as the Christian well, church. They kind of, well, we kind of, it's parasitic. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's a parasite. Mm-hmm. It, it lives off of the life of of Christian culture, well, right. Dawkins and his worldview does too, right? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like the whole, what, yeah, yeah. All of them, right. all of it, do, all of them do. He's waking up a little bit though. <laughs> well, he's, like, he's like, wait a second, I need a host. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Islam is not going right. to be good yeah. enough for no, me. No, Islam's no, not going to let me host. No, Islam will kill him. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I just, my my thought was as as I watched this. Uh, I mean, my thought was, you know, everybody's a Christian nationalist. Mm. That's my thought. Every, I don't, I don't, except I don't, for David French and Russell Moore? E, e, no, they, no are they, are they are too. They are too. Oh, okay. Everybody's mm-hmm. Christian nationalist. So they, you got they, cultural okay. Christian nationalism and then you got... Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, do, do you, do you want to live Do you want to live in a land where it's illegal to steal and kill? Yeah. Yeah. yeah where, Christian where nationalist. bad guys get punished. Christian nationalist. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah, no it, it's illegal to steal and kill in Islam. Yeah, no. Nah. It just don't have the same amount of freedoms for everybody else. Yeah, no, not, not it's, it's it's not consistent. Hmm. It, it's it's not it's not based on God's law. It's not based on. I mean, they it's can beat their wives. Well, well, I mean, it's not. Well, what about it's what about all redefined? What about Singapore? It's illegal to steal there. Mm. It's illegal to kill there. Yeah. Just not for everybody. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you want equal weights and measures, if you if you want, which is what James Lindsay wants. Sure. He wants equal weights and measures. And Dawkins. And Dawkins. They want to live in a place where... Uh, where uh, One plus one equals two. Yes. <laughs> in the real world... That's right. ...that the living God made, where facts matter, where mm-hmm. truth matters, where, where justice matters, uh, where, where due process matters, and you can't just get canceled because a mob came after you, mm-hmm. um, it, then you want to live in a Christian nation. Right. And you... And, and that, that was that was my thought. I just realized. I mean, like that's that they they all do. Everybody does. Yeah. Every, every, everybody wants to live in a Christian nation. Everybody w- wants to live in in a place where God's law is honored. And and of course, it's not just. I don't. You know, there's somebody out there thinking. Well, he thinks it's going to get solved by law. I, I'm not. I don't mean just by law. I mean, in order to have that in place, you have people who love it. You have people whose hearts have been changed. You have people who know Christ. You know, you, you know people. You have people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, and because of that, they they love that beauty. They they honor that beauty, and then they make beautiful things. They 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 compose. Yeah. They paint. Um, I, you were talking about the secularists, uh, and I don't know why, but I immediately thought of NPR. Mm-hmm. And like <laughs> I, NPR is is like like is this is this little um, you know tapeworm? Yeah, you know, like they, like a const, like they're playing all these like all this Christian music, mm. and they hate the, the God that that Christian music was written. You know, not all of it, right, but a lot right. of it was written yeah. to honor. Yeah. And All right, that's it. Dishonor. Dishonor on your whole family. Make a note of this. Dishonor on you. you. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on everybody. 
Does he say dishonor on your cow? Dishonor on your cow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think of that as like Deuteronomy curses, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, have, I want to add to that when you get. When okay. I'll let you read this ad. Let me read this ad. Public houses or pubs are not just places to drink beer, wine, cider, or even something a little stronger. It's also a unique social center, very often the focus of community life in villages, towns, and cities throughout the world. We here at Cross Politic hope to emulate that for you and yours. That's why you should grab yourself a Fight, Laugh, Feast pub membership at fightlaughfeast.com. We need you on this ride with us. So pull up a chair, grab a pint, join us on this ride at fightlaughfeast.com. That's fightlaughfeast.com. Join the pub, and that gives you access to all our previous conferences. Uh, you, you got um, you, you can, We're starting to put some FLF University yeah, classes. Yeah, university classes. We've got yeah, a lot of backstage yeah. conversations uh-huh. with, with guests, uh, and it's a way that you can support us and uh, just be part of the party. Um, so when I heard this clip, the first thing I was thinking about uh, believe it or not, was I think what's waking Dawkins up and what he sees better than I think most of the Christians will see is the eschatological realities of the worldviews, right? Yeah. And for whatever reason, we try to have these conversations in Christendom like they don't matter. Mm. We don't like to actually, we, we, we have eschatological debates for fun. Yep. Right. Oh, that's that's a great idea. That's a great choice. I think you had that one. That's cute. Ha 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 ha. Oh, you can have that. You can be this. No, 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 no. They they actually have real implications. And I think Richard Dawkins is saying, wait, the eschatological reality of the secularist is actually here. Mm-hmm. And and I don't like it. And I think Christians are saying, well, the eschatological realities really don't matter because we don't care what happens necessarily in the near future anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. There's there's we don't we actually need this to happen in one way or another. So who really cares? And I think there's another group that people and this is why. <laughs> who was it that was attacking Moscow? Oh, it was Kevin DeYoung and a few other people when they attack Moscow and when they attack the Moscow mood, they always tie in our eschatology and theonomy and even Ligon Duncan. They always tie it all together. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because. Ligon Duncan is basically saying the thing that Christopher, uh, not Christopher Hitchens, but Dawkins wants is Im- impractical. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> right? Which is kind of yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Whereas yeah. atheist is sitting up here saying, no, we need, I, that. And we it's need practical. more hymns, please. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not, not going to say I'm a Christian. I'm just, you know, I, yeah. I like it culturally. Yeah. Yeah. And so keep it up. Let's, let's keep that. And then these other guys that are saying like, yeah, it doesn't matter. We'll just worry about the gospel and preaching that and kind of keep our little, and, and the atheists over here saying, no, no, you don't understand. Hmm. If Christianity doesn't have a, a, a eschatology that actually holds together the current reality of Christianity, I don't get to speak against y'all. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, I, which, yeah, I, I need freedom. I need freedom. I need the first amendment. I need the second amendment. I yeah. need all this. Now, Dawkins, of course, is not yeah. American. But that's still the same yeah. thing. Listen, he still I, wants it. I still want <laughs> it. Even American though, or not. You're absolutely right. And and the thing is, is so like, and even in the clip about mocking mercilessly, mo- mocking yes. these things. So, you know, mockery doesn't exist. You got it. That's right. If you don't, if you don't have transcendent standards, yeah. if you don't, if there's actually not right and wrong and, and right side up. And, and I'm not saying, right. I'm not saying all mockery is good or virtuous or true, yeah. but, but, it, but I'm saying it, it doesn't work. We've talked about this with comedy. Mm. Like humor, comedy yeah. doesn't work um, if if there's not a right side up. Transcendent if if truth. everything's up for yeah. grabs, then nothing's really odd. Everything's odd. But it's because God made a normal world that comedians come along and say, isn't this funny? <laughs> and they point out the oddities because yeah. there is a norm, because there's a normal world, which assumes morality, which mm-hmm. assumes God and, and a created uh, order. Um yeah, I'm in a weird spot because I don't know what to do. I mean, I do. I don't really care what Richard Dawkins says. I never have anyway, one way or the other. So he hasn't, you know, helped my worldview. I think he's just a touch point for me on the map of, oh, it's actually going the way that I think it should go. Right? right? Um, he's a touch point for me that, oh, this is reality. Even the atheists are seeing the world, yeah. unfortunately, better than some of my Christian brothers in the world. One of the things you got to watch. So I don't know what to yeah. do with him. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, one yeah. sense, like, I got to yeah. figure out, what do we what do we do with Dawkins? Did, did, it was, was it this guy who's like... Sidekick became a Christian not too long ago. Was it Dawkins or was it a different atheist? Uh, there was some athe- famous yeah. atheist who had like a like an assistant. It I think it been, was. It might have been uh, Ray Comfort was talking about. Became that. a Christian yeah. not too yeah. long ago. Anyways, yeah. um, but but the thing to realize too is that back of this is is not. It's actually secularism is inherently unstable. Yeah. So secularism is the lie that you can have a, a public square and basically a public life that's absolutely neutral. It's religion free. Yeah, it was right. Dawkins. 
his assistant. Yeah. Um, Josh, so, uh, Josh Timonin. That's so, interesting. So, um, so that's interesting. I mean, yeah. you know, curious to see what happens, but, but the thing is the secularism is inherently unstable. Mm-hmm. It, it's like saying we can have this space where there's no God, which is just silly. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it's like, it's like saying you can have, you know, you can have this, you know, you have someplace with, without, um, any gravity without, tr- you know, all these yeah, things yeah. It just it doesn't work. Um, but, but what you have is, um, are actually happening so for Dawkins is he's watching particularly in, in England and in Europe is um, in the place of a so-called secularism, you've had a massive um, infiltration of Islam. Right. So, Oh yeah. So, and, and so later yeah. in this interview, he brings up the yeah. same 6, interview. 6,000 temples mosques yeah. are under construction right now. But, but that's the thing is, which, which is like, that's the, how you take over. So, I mean, in, in a Christian nation, that might be illegal. Abraham knew how to know. use centers of worship, to take over lands. Yeah. But so, yeah. so, mm-hmm. so, Nature abhors a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Nature abhors a vacuum, which means wherever you have the creation of a so-called vacuum, there's something's going to, reality is going to rush in. Yeah, right. And people made in the image of God naturally are worshipers. We are worshiping beings. We're either going to worship the true God or we're going to worship idols. That's that's just facts. And so when you have people pressing for secularism, a a neutral public square, a naked public square, um, inevitably what's going to come in if they're primarily trying to keep the Christian God out Mm -hmm. is idols. Right. And that's precisely right. what's happened in these historically Christian nations as they've basically tried to suppress Christianity right on target. Right. Idols come in right. and at the, basically the supreme um, God of the current um, idolatrous pantheon is Allah. And yeah. and so that's that's the that's the paganism that's 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 come rushing yeah. in. And I think that's really what he's starting to see. Yeah. Um, you know, we it, should we should talk about the last battle again. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is what this is what C.S. Lewis talked about in, in the last battle. I mean, yeah. illustrates in the last yeah. battles. You have this this faux secularism. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, you know this this attempt at like you know all religion is just pretend, mm-hmm. and then it turns out it's not. That, that's what that's the lie of secularism. It's mm-hmm. all pretend. Mm-hmm. It's really not. And you you play that around with that lie long enough, and the and the real gods. Right. Show up. This is it's funny you bring that up because I was thinking we talked about this earlier, which is this is our, our Reno's whole point of yeah. his book yeah return, which, of, the return strong of the strong gods yeah and there's and gabe you made a really good point i was hoping you were going to say it on the show but you didn't uh, which was secularism is secularism is dead mm-hmm. and the real um cl- real battle the, the real yeah. uh clash clash is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is, yeah is islam and christianity right because if you got right. six thousand temples going or whatever they're building mosques going up mm-hmm. and plenty more which is what the lbc lady said on the mm-hmm. show and Christianity, what people aren't seeing is it's not as dormant as they think. There is a remnant that is right. building, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there's a remnant that's homeschooling, that's actually yep. honoring God, covenanting together. That is strong and it's powerful. And you have the culture along with it. There's going to come a point where these two are hitting yeah. directly, right? right? And, and so you're going to have a whole, and I think Dawkins is seeing that and saying, I, I don't want that other worldview to win over against Christianity. Right. Mm-hmm. There's something else though. I, I was thinking about this. Um, what do you, I, I still want to go back to this. What do you do with Dawkins? Is he, a, cause here's the deal with, when you look at, um, when you look at guys like Russell Moore, you guys, none, uh, cultural Christian folks, you know, um, do you, they're kind of, in one sense, I kind of, feel closer to Dawkins and understanding the reality of our situation mm-hmm. yeah. than I do to these guys who you're supposed to be in uh, Christ with man, you know? man, what are you doing? It's the I vibe mean, shift. No, the, it's I, the mean, vibe I shift. mean, first you're friendly with Andrew Clavin and now you're yeah. buddying up to an atheist. Yeah, I know. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. No, you no, know. no, no but, but explain yourself. Even a broke clock is right. You know, twice. <laughs> you're, you're a broke clock. <laughs> what, what, what do you, what do you mean by what do we do with him? Well, because what do you mean by that question? Well, because in one sense or another, the whole the whole ground has shifted. I wouldn't have thought that in a documentary that I was making that I would find that atheist that can explain the situation of wokeism and woke culture right. and secularism entrenching the church better than Christians. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wouldn't have thought 15 years ago that was going that what guy was shooting at. Mm-hmm. And now he's over here telling the Christians, please don't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't do it. And they're up here like, we're going to repent one more time for slavery and we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> you know, we need to hear black voices, right? Like, well, and all the and, and, uh, and give me the black six. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got we got these things that are that are here, and the atheist like, what are you guys doing? Right. And his ethical. Well, when well, you have all these Christians saying, you know, there's no such thing as Christian culture. 
Right, there's no exactly. such thing that's as a, a whole, Christian nation. There's no such thing as Christian nation, no such and, thing as Christian and, culture. And don't you know... It's it is sp- like, spend, I want to sing hymns. Uh, and, and, and you're spending all that money on cathedrals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah, and right. You, and you, you, know, you could have spent it on missions and evangelism. And he's like, we need that Christian cathedral. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? It's, right. It, and, and, and there's a reality to... And this is what I mean by this, too. Richard Dawkins' historical... Just say from a literary sense, and maybe same thing with... Um, uh, what's his name? Jordan Peterson has such a, a, an appreciation for what Christianity has built right. that they can't just let it go. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you have Christians who believe in Jesus who are like, who cares whatever we built? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Right. And that's, and then and that, you're like, and in that sense, you're like, wait a wait second. Wait a sec. Yeah. I, I feel closer to that yeah. guy. Well, yes. Yeah. And, and I know that I'm not, I am yeah. blood connected but, to but, the guy right, who's right. like, wants to poo poo all over Christianity. <laughs> Right, that, that's that's the thing. I'm yeah. connected to that guy yeah. covenantally. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor, dishonor on your you. whole family. Make a note of this. Dishonor <laughs> on you. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on everything. Yeah, um, but I think I think the, you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. I do. I think the connection though is is I, I do think that you can have these people that you recognize. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend eternity with them. Like they're they're. They're believers. They're you know we're going to go to heaven together. Love to spend eternity and, with Dawkins too, and we're all going to sort it out. Right. Yeah, and and, yeah. and Lord willing, yeah, Dawkins comes. We welcome all, you. Comes yeah. all the way, but um, I think there also are places where we can say. I mean, Jesus says this in the Gospels: <laughs> the children of this age are wiser um, than the children right. of the kingdom. Come on, man. And, and so I, I think there are places where we say this guy sees reality more than the people who ought to see. I mean, we ought to see reality. Right. Um, we ought to, because we, you know, we know the one who made reality, right. but frequently we don't, and pre- and frequently it's the sons of this age, it's the children of this age yeah. who look at it and they say, "Wait, this is way better, and this is way import- more important." And the people who are the 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 heirs of that right. say, "Oh no, that doesn't matter." Right? Yeah, because he's arguing for, in one sense, a cultural Christianity, yeah. oh, right? Yeah, and, and which which we would look at and be like, cultural Christianity needs to repent. Yeah, right. And and at the right. same time, praise God for it. Well, right. but, but that's the thing is, I, other people understand, but like, so cultural Christianity though is the fruit right. of real Christianity. Right. So it, like, now is there a kind of fake pharisaical version? Yeah, absolutely yeah, there right. is. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have people faking it right? Um, because it, it's worthless. Mm. You have people faking it because it's actually valuable. Right. It's something worth it's, imitating. It's, it's something yeah. worth imitating. Yeah. This goes to the whole Aaron Wren thing with yeah. the, the positive, um, neutral, negative, and negative uh-huh. world. Um, we, you know, it's it's weird, but you do have a shift. Go- On the one hand, you've got the shift going to negative world, uh, sure. where, where there's sure. some real. Sense, Are we in it? Some places where it's like. So what he means by that is, in a positive world, you say I'm a Christian, and that gets you in an invite. That, get, that makes you popular. So you right. want to have a membership in a church. You want to um, put that right. on the, the front end. Neutral means it doesn't really matter one way or the other. Negative means it's a strike against you. Right. And, but in a weird kind of way, yeah. Dawkins and Lindsay <laughs> and world. others are actually actually starting to kind of flip it. Like, yeah. like in, a same, yeah. in a weird way where they're saying they've seen how DEI and woke culture is eating reality. Yes. Destroying reality. And they're starting to flip back and say, how about some of you Christians come out and help us? Right. How about some of you Christians who believe in truth and reality come out and, and, and help us stand for this truth and reality so I can mock it again? You know, but like, right. But it's because they're not bought into the reality of the worldview, but they know they can't. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a, a parasite that needs the host to exist. Yeah. Right. Like that, that's what it is. Their worldview yeah. is exactly. that. Exactly. And they need it to exist. Yeah. And if it goes away, they. They go away too, and they understand that. Gabe, Man. do you want to say anything? No, Ooh, <laughs> that was wow. it. No. That was it. He's wow. done. There. Wow. Okay. All right. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids? And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. When tyrants take over, what's the first thing they do? Disarm. It happened in Russia, China, Germany, and most recently, Afghanistan. Why? Because disarmed people are easier to control. And over the last century and a half, American tyrants have been carrying out a slow, methodical disarmament that no one is talking about. State education. Tyrants know that education is warfare. Our rulers have a vested interest in making you totally harmless. They've got big plans and they don't want you getting in the way. Think about it. Would you rather fight an army decked out with high-powered rifles or a bunch of dinky water pistols? They know that if you can think critically, you're a threat. 
At New St. Andrews College, we want to graduate men and women who are dangerous. Dangerous to the world, dangerous to the principalities and powers, dangerous to spiritual wickedness in high places. Education can either arm you or disarm you. It can make you a threat or make you a useful idiot. <laughs> so, where you get that education counts. Click the link to apply to New St. Andrews College today.